Representative Hilferty. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, Chairman Garofalo, you mentioned um, you received specific examples from residents of Louisiana without naming names or even um, locations. Can you give examples of, of what they told you? Yeah, they're telling, primarily it was employees or, and, and uh, teachers telling me that they're being forced to take trainings that are advocating for these theories to, that are, I don't want to say anything I shouldn't say, but um, but that, you're not. I mean, we're I, I know. I mean, I, I, but like, that that's the the primary focus of it. The parents that I spoke to are giving me examples of um, handouts that they're being being given. Like what does the handout say? Handouts saying you know United States is a racist racist country that um, corporations um, are you know inherently racist and have a bias against um can you sh share examples of these with the committee not without without jeopardizing the the privacy of the people i gave them to me i mean you could redact that information i would imagine no but if, if i give you the specific you you could tell where it came from and i i i, I can't do it so i i, I promise not to do it i've been they've implored me not to do it so it, it was only a few examples it wasn't a lot but they they were there, and that's okay. It, okay, it, so you it cannot was, give it was us. Given out, okay. It was given out. It not as uh, not for the truth of the statements that were in the the assignment, but it was given out as a punctuation assignment, so that you were supposed okay. to punctuate the, the the statements, and that's the way it was it was given out. So it wasn't like a history class. I think many of us would appreciate seeing that if you could redact out the, the I, I information. I will talk to the that... people that gave it to me and ask if they mind. They, there were examples on Facebook, and I saw them months ago, but I, if I can go back and find those, I'll get those to you as well. Okay. Bessie is overviewing social studies curriculum this year, correct? Yes. Would that not be a time without the legislature coming in and not knowing the entire story for multiple sides to come. I know Rep. Duplessis has had a bill last year that, that looked at, at how our students are taught certain things in history. You, why would we not just engage in that process? This is a bigger issue. This is dealing with more than just a social studies curriculum. This is dealing with curriculum in general. It's dealing with the, the environment for employees, teachers, and, and um other employees alike, and it's dealing with higher ed administration, teachers, and employees. So this goes well beyond the scope of the study that's occurring right now for the curriculum, the social studies curriculum in K through 12. But I think that's a part of it, and that would be a place where multiple parties could engage in what is being taught and how it is being taught. Absolutely, and that's what's going on as far as the social studies curriculum goes. But that the social studies curriculum does not touch the other areas that this bill does. Let's talk about page uh, 4, section E, line 21. You, uh, on, the, on the original bill? This is the bill that you had marked up for us and okay. sent us that shows the red line changes. So that, that might be a little different, but I think it is section E. Um, it says nothing in the section but shall be construed to do any of the following, inhibit or violate First Amendment rights of students or employees, um, and or undermine intellectual freedom or freedom of expression, prevent a, a school from promoting racial, cultural, ethnic, ethnic, intellectual, or academic diversity or inclusiveness if such efforts are consistent with, are consistent with the provisions of this section. Is that section it's referring back to the entire bill? Yeah, that's when you use that term, when it's capitalized, it's, re it's referring to this section of law. Section three, part three of this. Prohibited discussion of divisive concepts as part of a larger course of academic instruction. Uh, to me, what you're saying here contradicts much of the bill. And I, I, when I initially reviewed this bill, I found it confusing and hard to follow. And I think when we give it to a teacher in the classroom, I, I don't know how they are going to make th this section E seems to contradict what you're saying in the rest of the bill. Um, so so what, what would you consider part of a larger course of ac academic instruction? The first off, if you go to page four, line 16, it says, D1, each school governing authority shall adopt policies and procedures for the investigation of complaints relative to noncompliance with this section. So the policies and procedures sets out what the policies and procedures should should uh, maintain. So the teachers won't get this bill. 
the teachers will receive the policies and procedures as set out by the district. Okay, but let's go back to, to part three of this, prohibit discussion of divisive concepts as part of a larger course of academic instruction. What does that mean? Exactly what it says. I mean, the, the, the words on the page are, are if, if there's but, a... But what is a larger course of academic instruction? If you're teaching, if you're having a discussion on whatever the case may be, on slavery, then you can talk about everything dealing with slavery, the good, the bad, the ugly, the there's, whole... There's no good to slavery, though. Well, then whatever, whatever the case may be, you're right. You're right. I, I didn't mean to imply that. Uh, and and that I don't believe that, and I, I know that that's the case. But I'm using that good, bad, and ugly to, as a generic way of saying that you can teach any factually, factually based anything regardless none, none of us were around when slavery occurred we we can we can rely on the history that was written about that time we can rely on primary documents that we have found but n nobody sitting here on this uh, on the earth was around um when when the united states had slavery so i i i, I just none I, of us were alive when most of history was written History is constantly being written. It is a fluid concept. How can history, it, it, a, a fact is a fact. So I don't understand what you mean by a fluid. Please explain to me what you mean by a fluid concept. I'm saying history, history is yesterday. History is two days ago. And what uh, occurred, occurred. That's exactly what I'm saying. We agree on that. But we can experience the same event and, and potentially have differing, differing views. I mean, you know that as an attorney, and, and that, that, that witness testimony can, can vary. I, I just, it comes back to, uh, <laughs> there are divisive concepts that are taught in the larger course of academic instruction. And the first part of this bill seems to contradict the ability that you're allowing them to, to teach divisive concepts as a part of a larger course of academic instruction. That's and I think that's when many of the opponents have had trouble reconciling those two ideas. When you teach a concept and you're giving all sides of the concept, and I, I, I'll, I'll but tell let's you, take, there's, let's, no, there's no good side to slavery. There, I get that. That's, I don't think anybody in this room would argue that fact. I, I'd be really shocked if they did. But if there's a different concept that you're trying to teach, you teach the concept. You teach the con as it was conceptually uh, brought in, and you you don't take you don't give a personal opinion. You don't give a politically based, ideologically based opinion. You teach what occurred, what is generally accepted by the historians in the area, and what's what's prescribed proscribed by the curriculum that the district has chosen. Which is what we are studying with the Bessie overview coming exactly, up. Exactly. Correct. Yes. That's exactly so then correct. that can be a part of that conversation. But, but I think there are some events that have occurred that there is no other side to teach that, that many, um, the Anti-Defamation League contacted me about this bill. Um, and they're very concerned with the teachings of what happened during the Holocaust and what happened in Nazi Germany and the atrocities that happened. There's... There is no good side to that. I don't know how you would teach a rounded perspective of that. You, you, it's, it's, if it's factually based and what's generally accepted as being a fact of what occurred in history, you can teach it. I'm just saying you don't take a, a personal position. You don't bring political ideology in to influence <laughs> that course of study, whether it's math, history, and that, again, to, to get back to your question about the curriculum study that's going on right now, that's dealing strictly with social studies. It doesn't deal with any of the other courses of instruction, nor will that touch the training and um, the, the different, how, whatever the, the teachers and the uh, staff are receiving. I have no further questions, thank you. Thank you, Representative Hilferty. Uh, 